Hi and thank you for joining me in this entry three functional skills video we are going to take a look at bar charts. Now in a classroom everybody seems to be happy when we reach this topic because everyone loves to draw a bar chart but we need to be a little bit careful. There are lots of elements to a bar chart and in order to make sure we get it absolutely right we need to be familiar with all of them so we're going to look at a couple and make sure we understand all the details. We use a bar chart when we want to display a set of information or data in a clear and simple way. For instance, we have some information here on the screen that tells us about the number of birds that have been seen in a garden. So we have the information about the number of robins, blue tits, pigeons and nuthatches. It's been done as a tally and then added up. So what we need to do with this information is display it in a bar chart. The important thing is that a bar chart has a number of different parts to it and we need to make sure that we include everything. So let's make a start. Firstly, we have these two lines and all bar charts have similar lines. We are going to put labels on each of these lines to tell the reader what the information is that we are displaying. The first two labels tell us along the bottom about the different types of bird that we've seen in the garden and the label at the side tells us the number of each birds and it is in the center area here that we're going to put our information but first we need more labels so now we have first added the names of the birds along the bottom and on the side a scale of numbers which will allow us to record the number of each of the birds also we have put a title at the top so all these elements are vital for making an accurate bar chart. Now we can start filling in the chart to show the numbers. And as you can see, a bar has been added for each of the birds in the garden. So to read the graph, first of all, let's take a look at the robin. If we look at the bar immediately above its name and go to the top of the bar, we can see by reading across the bar chart here that there were 12 robins in the garden. Blue tit similarly, go to the top and read across, we can see there were eight blue tits. The sparrow is three, the pigeon is six, and the nuthatch is one. You will notice two more important things. Each of the bars is the same thickness, and there is a space between each of the bars so that you can see each one of them clearly. So the bar chart gives us the numbers of each of the birds in the garden, and of course it also allows us to compare so that you can answer questions. If someone were to ask you how many more robins were there than sparrows, you could say, well, the robins, there were 12, sparrows there were three so the difference between the two is nine there were nine more robins let's have a quick summary of the important parts of a bar chart they have to have a title it tells the reader exactly what your bar charts about it has to have labels up the side and along the bottom one for the types and up the side the numbers you need to pick a scale, a range of numbers that suits your graph, and the bars must be evenly spaced and even thickness. Let's have a look then at another example of a bar chart. Here we have information on the left hand side telling us this time about drinks sold in a kiosk. We have tea, coffee, milk and so on. And the right hand column is the frequency telling us how many of each of the drinks have been sold. So let's check first of all the bar chart to make sure that it's giving us all the information we need. First of all, it does have a title. We know it's about drinks sold in the kiosk. We have a label along the bottom telling us about the type of drink and also each of the drinks has its own small label. Going up the side, we are told that the number of drinks sold is being represented and indeed we have the numbers to show us how many of each drinks. These numbers then are the frequency. The bar chart has bars which are all the same width and they have a space between them. 
We can therefore look, for instance, at T, how many T's were sold at the kiosk. Read across from the top of the bar chart, it tells us 22. Coffee is 18, and so on. So, a perfectly good bar chart. I hope you found that useful. Don't forget, make sure you've got all the elements, all the details in place, and you'll not go wrong. If you want to see some of my other videos, please do hit the subscribe button at the bottom here. I've put one video at the side that you might want to take a look at, and hopefully I'll see you again. Thank you.